We hope that you've enjoyed tonight's feature offering on Starlight Theater. And will join us next time for another classic motion picture. Programming on WYES is made possible in part by Bookstar, supporting information in all its forms and helping to bring you the best on public television. Thank you for joining us. This is WYES Channel 12, your public broadcasting station in New Orleans. We operate from our studios at 916 Navarre Avenue, which are located just off the campus of Del Gato Community College. The Federal Communications Commission has authorized our license through the Greater New Orleans Educational Television Foundation. We now leave the air, wishing all our viewers a good night and a better tomorrow.
It's been lovely being here with you, dear. It is with regret I have to go. I'll be thinking of you, don't you fear, dear, with a happy heart that loves you so. Pleasant dreams to you, dear. May they all come true, dear. In your slow. class, pay attention. Your assignment for tomorrow will be to finish reading chapter 12. Any questions? Oh, one more thing. Will Kevin Bayless see me after class? Who's that? Some new kid. Kevin, did you hear me? S sir? See me after class and I'll assign you a book. Well, how'd you enjoy your first day with us? Okay, I guess. Excuse me, could you tell me where to meet bus 77? This way. You know, I never had to ride a bus before. Oh, yeah? Hey, Greg! so much chewing gum in my life. Last stop, buddy. Which way did that girl go? You know, the one with curly hair, white slacks? Curly hair? Yeah. White slacks? Yeah. Listen, buddy. No little curly-haired girl with white slacks just got off this bus. Tracy Donnelly. Darn, I 
wish I knew where the movers put my spice rack. You never guess where I found the toaster? In the attic. Now, why on earth would they put the toaster in the attic? Well, I'll just have to buy some garlic salt. Your father simply cannot live without it. Perfect. Another day like this, and I'm going back to Oregon. Can I go with you? Honey, lend me your pencil for a second. These must be all over the house. I found a whole pack in that old desk the Donnellys left behind. You did? You mean the Donnellys used to live here? Yes. The lady next door told me they moved away right after the accident. Too many painful memories, I guess. What accident? Why, their daughter, Tracy, died last year in a school bus accident. See you, Mr. Caldwell. See you tomorrow, kid. Well, that's what we say, you know. Go say boo! Cut it out, will ya? Are you crazy? No, but the driver's gonna think you are if you don't keep your voice down. He can't see me. He already thinks I'm nuts, thanks to you. Listen, buddy, no curly-haired girl in white slacks just got off this bus. Well, what do you want me to do? Walk up and say, hi, Mr. Caldwell, haven't seen you for a while. Not while the bus is moving. You might lose control and send us flying into one of those... Oh, I'm sorry. I wouldn't want that to happen again. You're wondering what did happen, aren't you? No. Liar. Well, I didn't get out. I didn't get out soon enough after the crash. There was this fire. I'm sorry. Will you stop saying I'm sorry? I don't need that. It's not why I'm here. Well, why are you here? And why do you come to me? Why not someone you used to know? Come on. It'd scare them out of their wits. Besides, you and I have something in common. Newcomers and all. Here's your stop. Oh, and, uh, here's your pencil. Keep it. Plus, I have something else for you. Homework. Take care. When will I see you again? Tracy! And for those of you who aren't at Corvallis Junior High tonight, you won't have to miss out on all the fun. We're going live right now to the fifth annual Battle of the Bands. First up, a great new group from the area, The Scene. Thank you very much. All right, all right already. Okay, let's see what this is all about. Each school district and private school within the state shall ensure through a minimum of two drills each school year that every student is familiar with school bus emergency procedures and equipment. Okay. Types of evacuations. First, students exit through the front door. Second, students exit through the rear emergency door. Important, to avoid hitting your head, lean forward before you jump, and as you jump, flex your knees to cushion your landing. Well, that makes sense. And third, students in the front half of the bus exit through the front door, and students in the back half of the bus 
exit through the rear emergency door. If those exits are blocked, front, back, and side windows can be forced out with the bus's fire axe or wrecking bar. Huh. I didn't know that. Emergency equipment. In the case of evacuation, know where the following items are located. Fire axe or wrecking bar, first aid kit, fire extinguisher. The precise location of this equipment may vary from bus to bus, but in all cases it will be in the driver's compartment. Okay, after evacuation. Always move to a safe area at least 100 feet away from the bus and remain there in a group. Well, look who finally decided to show her face. What? Oh, never mind. I am so embarrassed. I told you you were the only one that could see me. Now that you're here, I can thank you in person for messing up my workout the other night. Oh, boys and their stupid weight. You were better off reading the handout. What is so important about this dumb handout? It is not a dumb handout, and you better know what's in it because you're going to need it. How do you know? Hey, look what that pickup's doing. so we can get out the emergency door. Better see if anyone's hurt. Everybody up there okay? Andrea's cut and the driver's unconscious. Do something, man. Grab the first aid kit and bring her back. Okay, let's get out of here. This is it, except for the bus driver. You better do something about him real fast. Kevin, the first aid kits on some buses have ammonia capsules. Let me see that a minute. Great. Okay, help her out and get far away from here. Hey, take it easy. What do you mean, take it easy? Every time someone jumps out, there's less weight to balance the front. This bus is going to nosedive any second. Go. Come on, let's get out of here. Oh, come on, we're getting out of here. Come on. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. My clarinet! Jenny, don't Jenny, go down there! Oh, oh, Where do you think you're going? But my clarinet's in there. If I don't have it tomorrow, I'm going to be in big trouble with Mr. Newhart. You're going to be in big trouble with me unless you get back up there and fast.
Tracy. Where's Tracy? Stay back. Hey, you saved our lives. You're a hero. You're going. You're going. You're going. You're going. You're Tracy! Tracy! Kevin, it's over. system knowledge brings you a way to save energy by using your building's existing telephone lines. Save up to 20% of the cost of heating, cooling, lighting, while improving your communications capabilities. Energy and communications managed by a single system from Bell. Introducing a spectacular breakthrough in home communication. It's the amazing new Electrophone, an electronic center complete with radio alarm clock and speaker telephone, all in one handsome compact console that works everywhere. In the bedroom, Electrophone works as a high-quality AM-FM clock radio. You can wake to news or musical blues with the press of a button. Want to sleep for an extra five minutes? Just press the sleep button and it's back to dreamland. And Electrophone has the special lullaby feature. At bedtime, you can program your radio to play for up to two hours, then shut off automatically so your electric bill gets a rest too. The sleek modular phone unit has all the newest options. Press the mute button and your party is on hold. Press the redial button and you automatically redial the last number you called. Great for those annoying busy signals. Tired of your phone calls? Press the off button and you'll rest undisturbed all night long. And look, your radio shuts off automatically whenever you pick up the phone. No more fumbling for dials and shouting over the music. Best of all, the Electrophone console has a built-in speakerphone that lets you have hands-free phone conversations. With the press of a button, you can carry on a conversation from anywhere in the room. And the speakerphone lets you enjoy three-way family conference calls, just like important executives. At the office, you'll save hours with hands-free conversations. No more stiff necks and tangled wires. Electrophone has over 15 fabulous features in one beautiful compact console. But here's the best feature of all. Now on this special TV offer, Electrophone is being offered for only $79.95 with a full money-back refund. Use your credit card and order your Electrophone console, the Space Age phone with the old-fashioned price tag. Here's how to order. COD and credit card orders. Call toll-free 1-800-4...
Some people hustle pool, some people hustle cars. But have you ever heard about the man who hustles stars? Jack Horkheimer, star hustler, director of the Miami Space Transit Planetarium. Our episode for this week, Monday, January 10th through Sunday, January 16th, is January, hot as summer, cold as winter, a tale of two triangles. Greetings, greetings, fellow stargazers, and have you ever heard a catchy phrase that really doesn't mean a heck of a lot, but somehow or other stays with you year after year all your life? Well, back when I was in third grade, I remember reading a short story about a king who offered a great reward, probably his daughter's hand in marriage, to anyone who could invent something which was at the same time both as hot as summer and as cold as winter. And to my young mind, that seemed quite a challenge. I even remember my teacher, Miss Dorneedon, made us wait for a day to read the final page and the solution to the story so that our curious young brains could endeavor to come up with a possible solution. I drew a cosmic blank and was both disappointed and delighted that the young man who solved the riddle did indeed invent something as hot as summer and as cold as winter. He concocted the world's first hot fudge sundae. And would you believe that phrase, hot as summer, cold as winter, has stuck with me all my life. Now, every January, we have a similar cosmic hot fudge sundae, a visual celestial paradox. Let me show you. Okay, we've got our sky set up for any night in January across the United States, Canada, and Europe in evening twilight. And if you look high up in the southeast, you'll see the three stars that mark the belt of Orion, the hunter. And up to the left of the three stars, the bright shoulder star of Orion called Betelgeuse. Now, if we draw a line from Betelgeuse down toward the horizon to the very brightest star in the heavens, which is the eye of Orion's dog, the star called Sirius, and then if we hang a left at Sirius and go to the bright star in the little dog, the star called Procyon, then back up to Betelgeuse, we form what we call the Winter Triangle. Brilliant, bright, cold as winter. Strangely and paradoxically, if you look over toward the northwest, close to the horizon, you'll see three more bright stars, which form an almost identical sized triangle. The bright star Deneb in Cygnus the Swan, the bright star Vega in Lyra the Harp, and the bright star Altair in Aquila the Eagle. And this triangle is called the Summer Triangle, a leftover from last year in January sky a reminder of the heat of summer. But what's even more interesting, even though the summer triangle disappears from January skies an hour or so after it gets dark, nevertheless, if you get up just before dawn and look to the northeast, you will see the hottest summer, summer triangle rising in the heavens just before the sun rises. And this double appearance happens only during the month of January. And you can see it for yourself. Simply go outside any January night during evening twilight, find the winter triangle high in the southeast and the summer triangle low on the horizon northwest, and then go out once again just before sunrise to see the summer triangle rising northeast. Isn't it lovely? Almost cold.
You're watching Sleepcore. Pleasant dreams. Welcome to this hour's update. Top of the galactic news is the continuing space battle on Galaxy 48. In spite of relentless attacks when alien space armada, the mothership continues to hold her own. And now some rather bizarre local news. A man was rescued today from a dark and sinister cavern deep underground. Dubbed by police as the Night Stalker, he told terrifying tales of deadly bats, poisonous spiders, and robots trying to kill him with laser guns. Laser guns weren't involved in this next news item, but a peaceful corner of the Earth was devastated today as a typhoon centering off the islands of Utopia swept inland, destroying in its path a complete industrial complex. And now some Hollywood movie gossip. Soon America will thrill to the danger and devastation of deadly discs. Look out for the futuristic adventure of Tron coming to your area. The sports desk has some hot items too. Thanks, Jim. First boxing, Mahatma Holly made his 216th attempt last night to regain his crown. <laughs> he was unsuccessful. The men's tennis semifinals at Wimbledon today saw that incredible player, beyond belief, return with a stirring rally to advance forward to the finals yet again. <laughs> it might be tennis weather here. But it's skiing weather on Zeus. A heavy snowfall gave the U.S. ski team an opportunity to practice for the 42nd Olympics. Ouch. Another report has just been starlined directly to the news desk. Planet Earth was apparently saved from total destruction today. Star Strike Forces counterattacked an attempt by an alien craft to laser bomb our planet. The craft was disintegrated. Until our next update, goodbye. Today's update was brought to you by Intellivision Video Games from Mattel Electronics. Hello, Johnny. Это Келвин Бейтс. Для тебя есть работенка. Один из наших хочет получить больше всех в деле. Жаль, но придется с ним кончать. Платим, как обычно. До встречи. Ганс Морис, президент фирмы игрушек. 46-я улица. Оружие при себе не носит.
Детские игрушки компании Морриса. Сундучок для солдат удачи. окружен. Сдавайся.
только в этом наборе. Действующая модель термоядерного устройства. About 1,700,000 years ago, man first appeared on the face of the earth. But such creatures as the jellyfish, the hydrozoa and the coral have inhabited the sea for at least one billion years. The simplest multicellular animals are called celenterates because of the structure of the celentra. The forms, colors and rhythmic movements of these tiny creatures living in harmony with their environment are beautiful to observe. It is a system of life where all living things coexist and function efficiently, either individually or in groups. Rationality and beauty are synonymous with them. Living together does not mean living side by side without interfering with one another, for they also prey on each other in a relation of mutual exploitation found throughout nature. In this film, we're going to explore some of the mystery of this underwater world captured through the eye of a camera. We will see how the living things behave in a fantastically complicated but well-organized way. Hydrozoas, which resemble flowers on the earth in appearance, survive by catching smaller creatures than themselves. They prefer different places to live, according to the species. Some of them grow on seaweeds, some on shells or fish, and others cling to the sand or rocks on the bottom of the sea. Salenterates in this stage are called polyps by biologists. The polyps of hydrozoa duplicate by budding, growing roots, or separating branches like plants. Some hydrozoas have a two-stage life cycle, a fixed stage of polyp and a swimming stage of jellyfish called medusa. Medusa buds grow on the polyps, enlarge and then leave them. The medusas have sexual distinctions and duplicate sexually. They can exist as medusa only under certain conditions, just as the plants on the earth grow flowers only in particular seasons. The buds growing on the polyps differ in number and location according to the species. For example, some polyps grow buds on their stems and others on their roots or on a part very close to their roots. This is true even in the case where the baby medusas may look exactly like those of a very similar species.
Also, some polyps have a division of labor between catching prey and duplication. Let's look at the Medusa buds more closely, taking Cladonema as an example. The small projections under their tentacles grow into buds. Next, organs, highly sensitive to light, which the polyps do not have, and tentacles begin to appear. And then the buds enlarge, spreading their tentacles outward and begin to heat up. By this time, they try to capture plankton by shooting poisonous needles which are stored in nematocyst capsules at the end of their tentacles. Here, baby jellyfish called the Medusa bud, still attached to its parent polyp, tries to capture prey together with its parent. And here, another polyp steals the prey captured by a nearby Medusa bud. When a Medusa bud is able to absorb the prey into its own stomach for the first time, it is a sign that it will soon be independent. This scene takes place just several hours before it becomes fully liberated from its parent. The Cyphozoa family, which includes the moon jellyfish, is much larger and has a more complex structure. Whitish polyps become many layers of reddish-brown strobilla, and soon each layer begins to become separated into Ephyra larvae. The ephyra gradually metamorphosize through the so-called nephephyra stage. A two to three millimeter ephyra grows into a large jellyfish with a bell 20 to 30 centimeters in diameter. Numerous tentacles extend from the brink of the bell, at the center of which is a large mouth surrounded by four oral appendages that flutter to and fro. About one billion years ago, the first solenterates made their appearance. But it is not known whether jellyfish or polyps were the first to appear. Hydrozoa and Cyphozoa have gone through two different phases as jellyfish and as polyps from time immemorial. This is not to say that they have not changed at all. They still retain a simple bodily structure, but have come to assume various forms according to the place and conditions in which they live. Thus, over a long, long period of time, creating those forms which are most suitably adapted to each particular environment. At birth, the Equoria jellyfish is only one millimeter in length and has but two tentacles. 
A few months later, it has many tentacles and has grown a bell 20 centimeters in diameter. The bell of the Storocladia jellyfish has degenerated over the centuries and looks as if it has been squashed. It weaves its way among the seaweed, not swimming, but using its highly developed tentacles to pull itself along. The Sarsia jellyfish, which inhabits the cold northern sea, has a long stomach when it reaches adulthood. These are gastroblasta with many stomachs. Some hydrozoas duplicate non-sexually, not only from polyps, but also by division or budding. Here, young raphkia with immatured sexual organs generate jellyfish directly from jellyfish. Some polyp-like jellyfish exist which cling to the surface of seaweed and never swim. Thus the way of life varies greatly among the solenterates. A plain of seaweed in the northern sea near the shore is an important life space for many creatures. The Gonionemus jellyfish, with a 1.5 centimeter in diameter bell, appears there in the summer. It has adapted well to the environment. With tentacles shaped like hooks, it can swim vigorously among the weeds and also grasp seaweed firmly. This is very convenient for catching a larger prey. The poison stored in their tentacles is strong and causes great pain to whomever they touch. The Spirocodon, native to Japan, is a winter jellyfish. As the end of autumn approaches, their tiny offspring make their appearance in a creek, and within a few months, they have grown to become large, beautiful jellyfish, only to disappear in spring after laying their own eggs. But it is still not known how these jellyfish live during the polyp stage. Thus, there is still much mystery about the Solenterex.
The comb jelly family, which is a kind of relative of the celenterates, has eight rows of cilia, which have the appearance of combs. When light is reflected on the cilia as they move to and fro in a regular manner, they shine like a rainbow. Their body is too fragile even to keep specimens of. Having no polyp stage, they spend their whole life in a form that is able to swim. Found in the sea around Japan, they are brought from the southern sea by the Japan stream. In that warm southern sea, there is a large world of salenterates. It is the coral reef sea. Masses of salenterate create underwater scenes reminiscent of mountains, valleys and plains on the face of the earth itself. It is mainly composed of large bone corals which form a big colony. Compared with other salenterates such as the hydrozoa and cyphozoa, individual corals are not so different in size, but their colonies are far larger than those of the jellyfish. Horny corals capture their polyp-covered prey by spreading their bodies against the current of the tide, like trees braced against the wind. And other creatures make use of the corals for shelter and habitation, just as living things on Earth use trees and vegetation. pieces of bone which are distributed all over their bodies. The Xenia family opens and closes its tentacles restlessly. reef looks quiet and calm, but is in fact very much alive, as many kinds of creatures incessantly go about their activities. The corals in shallower waters are green or brown, because a great number of unicellular plants called zooxanthella live inside them engaged in the process of photosynthesis with the abundant sunshine. The stony coral family is different from the soft corals we've described in that they have hard lime bones and keep their polyps closed during the daytime, except for fungia actiniformis, goniopora, euphilia, etc. The zooxanthella living in the Sinenkeen can thus enjoy the sunshine and engage in photosynthesis without being bothered by the polyps on the coral. And the stony coral can absorb the calcium in the water, taking advantage of the oxygen provided by the zooxanthella, thereby building up a huge colony supported by the lime bones.
Thus, the corals perform a part of the role that the vegetation on the Earth does, though they are actually animals. Over a period of several thousand years, a huge aggregation of stony coral colonies has created elevated coral islands, where the coral reefs work as a water break, permitting an abundant number of creatures to live there and contribute to our human life. Sheltered safely under coral reefs, small fish developed particularly gorgeous shapes and colours. Corals also fall prey to other animals. For example, Acanthaster cranthorn sea stars devour stone corals completely, leaving only the bones. Occasionally, Acanthasters increase to abnormal proportions and exterminate an entire coral reef. But usually, they are only one of the living things that inhabit it. The white sandy bottom of the sea around coral reefs consists mainly of disintegrated coral bones. Although at first glance it looks deserted, here also various creatures are evident, some searching for prey, others engaged in the process of reproduction, and still others taking up residence. Cavernularia sea pen, a soft coral, keeps its body half buried in the sand to catch its prey.
Cassiopeia root mouth jellyfish, which inhabit the sand of a coral reef, lies flat on the lowest part of the sand with its bell upside down, and even remains upside down while swimming. Actinodendron sea anemone looks extremely similar to the Cassiopeia root mouth jellyfish. It lives in the sandy area and is extremely poisonous. This creature, half buried in the sand and extending and retracting its tentacles to capture its prey, is not a sea anemone, but a species of sea cucumber, hiding most of its body from view. It is cuckoo maria at dinner. Adaptation of life to the sand has helped to form its peculiar shape. Biologists call a life that completely different species of animals share in common, symbiosis. For example, various fish of the Parmacentridae family, or clownfish, share life with large tropical sea anemone, such as Radianthus, Stoicactus, Physobrachia, etc. Clownfish are especially possessive, and one will not allow another to approach his own sea anemone. If then more than one clownfish are seen with one sea anemone, they are either a mating pair or parents with offspring that are not yet able to live independently. Sea anemone can manage without clownfish, but in the natural environment of the coral reef, clownfish cannot live without sea anemone. The offspring of the kingfish live with Physonostoma, the large jellyfish which are their only reliable companions. What help would it be to the jellyfish to be accompanied by a fish? When the camera approaches the jellyfish to take its picture, the fish tries to lead it away in a hurry. century, we live at a time when the very few areas as yet unexplored by man are fast disappearing. Perhaps it can be said that the only places left replete with the unknown are the vast reaches of space and the sea. Just as the distant space is full of the unknown, so too is the nearby sea. There is nothing so unwavering as man's desire to explore such regions. It is impossible and unnecessary to answer the question as to why he feels so impelled. Suffice to say that the pursuit of knowledge is a heartfelt demand given in the nature of man. It is a limitless and strong aspiration. 
The study of the Salentaris in Japan, which began with the study of those in the Northern Sea, is gradually but steadily developing into the study of those in the Southern Sea. Observing the ecology of the living creatures in the sea is a difficult thing. But with our developments in electronics, we can say that the door is now opening to a hitherto unfathomable world. Watching Sleepcore, Media for Insomnia. For more than two decades, Sybaris Pool Suites have proven to be the perfect place for couples searching to get away. A paradise for couples seeking to ignite their feelings, rekindle their romance, and enjoy quality time together. A Sybaris pool suite is a delight to the senses, providing every amenity possible. It's the ultimate romantic experience. Let's begin your romantic adventure together with this sneak preview of Sybaris pool suites. Luxurious. Romantic. Relaxing. Um, I made him laugh. Fun. Yes. I made fun. him laugh. <laughs> I was counting the times so I was making him laugh. It's just the two of you, together, alone, in a Sybaris pool suite. The perfect marriage of soothing water and comforting fire. A luxurious environment which brings couples closer together. I think it's real hard for, for people to get time alone. 
um, because there's always something else going on. Yeah, it was nice that you didn't have to worry about the phone, the doorbell, the kids, but we've never had the luxury to just lay there and talk to each other, you know, and I think it was three in the morning before I realized it's three in the morning, you know, we just got deep in talk and relaxing and having a good time. Everybody wants to be held and cared for and touched and loved, everybody. For 20 years now, Sybaris founder Ken Knutson has witnessed what his dream has meant for thousands of couples. It allows people to open up and talk, and they can't do that at home. The triggers, the triggers of home life keep you from doing that. And the communication is priceless. It's that time that you can talk and share and say how you feel. That's what Sybaris brings out of you. Sometimes when you have children, it tends to make the relationship sway away, you know, and this is, the Sybaris is more like an opportunity to make things back romantic and just bring things a lot closer together, you know, as far as your relationship is concerned. It can do a lot for one night. One night can do a lot for a person that hasn't been alone in a long time, and that's our problem. Oh, it's a place for rejuvenation of a relationship. It's a place to perpetuate, maintain that feeling that you desperately want. Sybaris Pool Suites. From the elegance of the Whirlpool Suite to the extravagance of the chalet, it's a tropical getaway that's close to home. As soon as we walked in, our eyes just uh, widened and our, our mouths just dropped. They had the lighting just right. All the lights were dim. The fireplace was, was on. And it was just very romantic. I mean, it was just beautiful, and someone really thought about every little detail. You know, towels by the pool, towels by the whirlpool, towels by the jacuzzi, towels in the sauna. Um, robes, robes on the bed. Terry cloth robes. It was like, let's just Even sport. a corkscrew by the... Uh, uh, glasses? Glasses. <laughs> nice bucket, yeah. Someone nice thought box. of every detail. But it was just, you didn't have to worry about creating the atmosphere to have a nice one-on-one -on -one conversation, you know? You didn't have to worry about soft music or, you know, candles or anything. It was like everything else was taken care of, of for you. You just had to worry about each other. It's really a class place. I mean, it, it, this guy who came up with this idea, I, I think he thought about the everyday guy who wanted to get away and just enjoy himself, even if it was nothing for but a day or two. When you walk into a Sybris room, the room is so opulent, a blue water shimmering with lights fractured through it, off the ceiling, a fireplace flickering, soft lights under the bed, soft music, the room smells beautiful, palm trees, a Hawaiian sunset in the room. Every trigger there tells you pleasure, tranquility, a remote island, you've shut out the world. Wow. You know, he's like going, a, I wow. want a room like this at says, home. If, you know, if you Can I build home, this at home? If you ever build a home, this is like the kind of master bedroom we've got to have. I mean, I was amazed. Here's a place that you don't come in and just get some rinky-dink cassette player. He, they give you a stereo system. CD. CD. I brought my CDs because, you know, I love jazz. I, I mean, you get the movies. You get, I mean, <laughs> this is... Where is this guy can at again? I want to shake his head for coming up with this concept. Because now I have a way. Right here, I got a way to deal with all that. Those Sybaris move. <laughs> That's a, a result of 20 years. 20 years of evolution. And only the wealthy seem to have the opportunity, like lifestyles of rich and famous. And you look at these things, no one that I know has a bedroom with a swimming pool in it. Not even the richest of people. It is your own swimming pool. It's not like shared with everybody else. This is your own. Um, Total luxury. People think that the pool is a small, like little, little pond pool. This is a, it's a, it's a, bit, it's a lake. This, <laughs> this pool is a lake. The sparkling waters of a Sybaris pool suite, continuously tested 24 hours a day, with state-of-the-art diagnostic systems that monitor and balance the pool. And as I was lounging by the pool and just relaxing, drinking my wine, you know, it's like, do the rich people appreciate 
that they could do this any day of the week, you know. It's like we're really lucky, you know, to just get away, have each other. It was relaxing. It was getting acquainted. I think it was... It was immaculate. Yeah. It was impeccable. The, it, the room was just spotless. Everything. Words like immaculate and impeccable describe the care and attention our suites receive. Our suites are meticulously cleaned and detailed, and each suite receives a thorough top-to-bottom final inspection. First time we stayed in the uh, regular petroleum pool suite. Yeah, and then we had the one with the Whirlpool. We had the, then we had the deluxe the yeah. second time. And the next time, I think we're going for the shot lake so I can pull them up. Plus explode right up down. into the garage, <laughs> and I can get out of bed, slide right down into the pool. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. That's worth it if you it want is. to be able to do it but just one time a year. It really is. Sybaris Pool Suites, a dream two decades in the making. Four convenient locations today, but it all started 20 years ago in Downers Grove. We currently have uh, two swimming pool suites at the very entrance the beginning. And then it has a, a series of Whirlpool Suites. There's eight Whirlpool Suites, private individual cottages. Then it has three deluxe Whirlpool Suites and one top of the line, one of a kind deluxe swimming pool suite, of which it's a two-story swimming pool suite where the bedroom is cantilevered over the pool. And the, the waterfall cascades down in front of the Whirlpool that's up on the upper loft. And it's a very special room. Northbrook is probably the most deceiving because the entrance is only 100 feet wide, but it opens up into a 1,000-foot run of five acres in the back, and that's secluded in the forest preserve. Just gorgeous. So as soon as you check in, you'll go through a guard gate, little entrance, and then you'll go winding through the forest preserve, and the trees surround the entire property. It's a magnificent. On the Northbrook property, each building is its own separate cottage, and it makes a little special touch out there. The Mequon property is probably one of the most beautiful properties that we have. It has a 300-foot entrance, and down the entrance on either side are lanterns. To the left is a magnificent farmhouse, an old country farmhouse that was built in 1869. In 1909, it was converted into a restaurant. Since 1909, Wolf's Island Restaurant has been known as the place to go for an intimate dinner, cocktails and dining, the best food that you could have. In every single square inch of the property, you can feel the history and enjoy the warmth. The restaurant is a perfect complement for your stay at Sybris. You'd want to have room service delivered to give you the privacy, or you may want to take a short stroll across the yard and dine in the gazebo or in one of the beautiful dining rooms to have a cocktail and dinner over candlelight. Just perfect for a getaway. And then to the right of that is the country-styled motel rooms. Each room is antique style, mansion beds, armoires. Uh, the Whirlpool for two is surrounded by lace. The bedroom has a large picture window that goes out onto a private deck. And then you have a Dutch double door, so you can have a door in the front, a door in the back, and the wind blows through the room. It's just a magnificent room. Out on the deck, you have a Weber grill. And then in the courtyard is a gazebo, a pond, and a trail that you can walk through the property on. Then surrounding that particular piece, we have the swimming pool suites, where we have the deluxe whirlpool, the swimming pool, deluxe swimming pool, and the chalets. Frankfurt Sybris is also built around a 100-year-old farmhouse. It is magnificent, and you come in the same as you would to the uh, Mequon property, and at the very front is this 100-year-old farmhouse that we completely rehabbed, and that serves as the office check-in area. The swimming pool suites surround this farmhouse, and it's magnificent. It's all done the outside like an antique, uh, lap-sided uh, 
to match the farmhouse. All done in white and black. Just beautiful. Sybaris Pool Suites. Romantic, luxurious, and affordable. What's it cost to get on a plane and fly on the floor to somewhere? It costs you all right. First, you got to get on a plane. You got to worry about luggage. You got to worry about travel arrangements. You got to worry about this and that. I mean, th this Sybaris concept to me is, is so amazing because it gives you a vacation without leaving anywhere. I think it's a perfect anniversary present for each other or something you know, just to spend on each other, a little splurge every once in a while. I think it's very affordable. Uh, we're thinking of giving our parents a gift certificate there, definitely. They deserve to get away too. I can't think of any place locally where you can get so much for really so little. I mean, it's, it's not cheap per se, but I think like on an annual basis, like if you take a vacation or a weekend out of town, it kind of fits that bill and it's got so much to offer once you get there. But I think it was instant relaxation. And the number one question that everyone asks, is it worth the money? I didn't even hesitate, I'm like, absolutely. You know, and we're not made of money. Teacher, Catholic, Catholic school, school teacher, teacher, I might add. <laughs> and, but, absolutely. And we were talking about, I said, we have to go back for our next anniversary, we just have to do it. At each Sybaris location, our front desk staff is committed to your complete satisfaction. At the front desk, ask about our gift certificates for your next special occasion. Also available at the front desk, a wide selection of videos for your viewing pleasure, from nature's landscapes to relationships and intimacy. You hear a lot about uh, the Sybaris, but it's more than what I, what I imagined it would be. Oh yeah, we left out of there like we are dating again. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly how we, yeah. you know, cloud nine. It's like a tropical paradise, really, it is. You gotta try it. I mean, you just got to try it. You gotta experience it. And now choose from an array of romantic gifts from Sybaris's own gift catalog. Gifts you can order to be delivered to your home or have placed in your suite prior to your staying with us. Featuring unique gifts like this exquisite live red rose sealed in 24 karat gold. Or these soft terry cloth robes and lounging bath wraps. Treat your loved one to a romantic massage utilizing luxurious scented body oils and lotions. Order fresh flowers to be delivered anywhere in the continental United States. Get your free catalog today by calling 630-543-9900. You can also visit us on the internet at www.sybaris.com. Beautiful gifts that enhance romance and intimacy just for the two of you.
several ways of showing space or distance in your drawings and paintings. Some of the ones that you will presently see are methods that artists have used for hundreds of years. They are easy to use and are based upon simple observation. You can show space by drawing the same object in different sizes. The larger the object is drawn, the closer it seems to you. And as it grows smaller, it seems to move further away. No matter what the objects are, this idea remains the same. Some artists use vanishing points in their drawings. This is just a more formal way of planning perspective or space. With this method, a point is usually placed on the horizon, and all lines which we wish to go back in the distance aim toward, then meet, and vanish at this point. In building this fence, the boards become larger as they come forward and grow smaller as they near the vanishing point. Stubby pencils, railroad, and telegraph poles make another good example of single point perspective, vanishing on the horizon line. In two point perspective, you draw lines out toward each other, coming from both points in a fan like shape. This plan may be used as a guide for architectural drawing. To add houses, buildings, streets, telephone poles, and so forth, verticals and diagonals are the only additional lines needed, besides the ones which go back to the vanishing points. Architects and draftsmen use these lines in an exact and mechanical manner. While artists use them only as an imaginary guide when painting or drawing realistic objects. Then they usually change and vary the rules to make their pictures more personal and interesting. Space may also be shown in the way you use your color. Darker, muted colors fade into the background of your picture, while brighter colored objects stand out and seem to come closer in the foreground. These birds are flitting about on the same actual surface as the background, but they appear to be closer because they are stronger in color. Note the differences in color between the background and Stubby Pencil with his Otto. Cool colors, greens, blues, and purples, and warm colors, yellows, reds, and browns, also have a lot to do with how you show space in your picture. Warm colors appear to come forward, while cool colors recede. 
the orange comes forward, the blue recedes, even though they are placed on the same flat surface. By drawing one object over another, you may again show spatial depth, still on the same flat surface. Here are some flat disks of orange color. Now placed one over the other, they appear to be oranges, some closer to us and some further away. Landscapes may be done in this manner too. The foreground objects overlap the background objects. Familiar objects drawn in exaggerated proportion give the viewer feelings of great distance. These large feet, leading up gradually to a small head, make the figure appear to recede into space. Or a large body with a tiny head placed in this manner gives the entire figure a look of gigantic height. You may use a combination of size differences, dark colors and bright colors, warm and cool colors, overlapping and exaggeration. With size differences, remember that the objects in the foreground should be drawn larger and the objects that you want to recede in space should be drawn smaller, according to their position in the complete picture. Imaginary lines will guide your drawing when you use single point perspective. These lines automatically meet and vanish at the established point. The two-point perspective method will help you if you are drawing a city scene with buildings and streets. In the space by color method, the brightest objects in your picture will appear to be closest to you. Overlapping objects naturally establishes a feeling of space, the feeling of objects closer or further away. More space or depth is obtained when you exaggerate figures or objects and draw them out of proportion. These are a few simple clues to a variety of possibilities which you may use to show spatial depth in your work. After experimenting, you will find combinations of your own, and by using them in differing degrees, you will come upon your own formulas by which to achieve in your pictures the wonderful feeling of space. <laughs>
You're, you're, you're a little overdressed for golf, it's yeah, okay. I know, I know. Oh, but I get a pretty good idea of what we're going to do. I got to break 90. Okay, are you close now? You're in the bubble? I'm like 90. Oh, very good. It's not that far away then. My chip and putt is just incredible. Excellent. My drives are awesome. You won't forget the little people, will you, when you make it on tour? <laughs> I'm so, too young to be Michelle so, so I look for this okay. triangle right here. All right. I look, that looks pretty good. I look for your feet to be all shoulder width apart. So I drew that box. As, mm -hmm. The box is outside the shoulders equals inside the heels. Okay. Now we're going to have a little bit of, it's difficult for me to be able to watch what your lower body's right. doing a whole lot. But what we're going to do different, whoops, excuse me. What we're going to do different is we're going to, um, you were talking about your hips. So let's just put a line right at your hips for this particular situation. Let's watch okay. what happens. So let's go to here and go to the top of your backswing. I swing. My you sway. Swing. I sway. Sway. That's called swaying. Oh, I do the hula sway. So the hula sway <laughs> costs you power. Okay? <laughs> you can see that I put that, let's go back to right from the very beginning here of where mm -hmm. we're, let's go back to this, do it this way. So you can see, I'm going to put a little box right on your knee as well. So the upper line's kind of on your hip, but not really, and on your knees. So let's just go to the top of your backswing and see where we get to. And let's go top. So you can see that, that it definitely swayed back. Okay. So I'm going to show you a drill to work on that. There's okay. a couple that we'll work on. Let's have a look. at. also want to make sure that your weight gets to the back side. It the almost, inside of my foot. Inside of your back. And right okay. now, where is it hanging out? Now look where your head is. Mm -hmm. Your weight's hanging out right here. It's weight, really? Yeah. It's right there. Wow. Versus getting back. Okay. Part of it is because the, the hula move. Yeah. And then the weight's... Hula. So I know. No, I've, I've it's been... Called reverse, it's called reverse pivot in golf. Okay, but no, someone says, well, you're doing the hula. And I'm like, I am not. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll show you a little okay. drill for that. Mm -hmm. And then let's get you... Would it help if I didn't go back as far? It might. Okay. I don't know if that's going to be it. That doesn't look too bad. You're tr you got to clean this up. Got a little bit of chicken wings going on here. You can see that ideally we have these infamous little chicken wings. Okay. You can tell you love this program. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'll be calling him. So from that perspective, and I look at those mm -hmm. chicken wings, and I go back to here, and I'll use you. Let's back her up a little bit. Uh, let's go back up. Do faster this one. Look at. I need the strength. Okay. See the triangle through yeah. there. Yeah. And you see the weight shift. Is that you can why see I if you look at this. Go ahead. I'm sorry, is that why I can hit my woods? It's because I'm farther back and I don't, I know I don't go back as far on my woods as I do my iron. Probably, probably that could be a guess. Normally it's the opposite with most people. They get a better irons and they do woods. You know, it's and the swing, like the, the and it could happens. be the swing of just, uh, it, it can change. You can go from irons to woods or woods to irons. It's like, what did I do different? And I really didn't do a whole lot of things. It just, sometimes it's, because Mercury's in retrograde and my biorhythms are on that day or whatever the case may be, but normally we swing the same way with both and we have a little better... You may swing shorter with the woods just because you want a little more control. I do. I know, I know I don't go back nearly as far with my woods and, and I'm also a lot more... And my V is like there. Sure. The, to the whole time. So what I'm going to do with you, let's do this. I think this will work. I'm not sure. So come on over here for a moment. Okay. 
Now just go to your setup with no club. Okay. Hopefully this will turn up on your tape. So go to your setup. Okay. And if I said to you, hi, Irene, I'm Dave. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You didn't go, hi, Dave. Okay. That's a better position. Right there. And look where your weight is now. Hang on. Mm -hmm. Feel the weight difference between what's in here okay. versus there. Oh. So you can like shake in my hand. Bingo, right through there. That's a better position for you. Now fall away through. Okay, so that. Yep. Bingo. Fall away through. That feel a little different? Good. You're watching Sleep Core. Sleep tight.
Give thanks to the Mother Gaia. Give thanks to the Father Son. Give thanks to the Healing Garden where the Mother and the Father are one. Give thanks, give thanks. To you we do give thanks. Give thanks, give thanks. To you we do give thanks. Preparing one's own herbal medicines is perhaps one of the most satisfying experiences that one can undertake. Whether one gathers their plants wild or grows them in their garden, a healing occurs right from the start. As one observes the cycles of nature, one learns more about the greater cyclic nature of all things, thus bringing about a greater understanding of one's part in the whole scheme of life. It is unfortunate that for most of us, Preparing herbal medicines is no longer passed down from generation to generation. Instead, it has become an esoteric art practiced only by wise women and sophisticated herb companies. This is unfortunate because the truth is that most herbal remedies can be easily prepared in your own kitchen. My hope is that this video will motivate you and empower you to take back your right and responsibility to heal yourself. I would recommend to you that you either grow or gather your own herbs in the wild. Over 80% of the herbs in this country have been imported. If you know about the circle of poison that affects food, this means that pesticides and herbicides that have been banned in this country are still shipped overseas. Then they're used on our foods and herbs that are shipped back into this country. Another problem is that all commercial herbal warehouses, even those storing organic herbs, are required to be fumigated several times a year. Herbs have also started to be irradiated, and there's no labeling on herbal products to warn you of this. It's fortunate that we now have the availability of many Chinese herbs, but a problem with this is that all the herbs shipped from China are required to be sprayed while still on the boats. Another potential problem of buying your herbs is that often lesser expensive herbs are substituted for more expensive herbs. Another problem is the wrong herb collected at the wrong time. Another problem is herbs that have been dried incorrectly and often herbs are stored incorrectly. In most health food stores, you'll see that herbs are stored in glass containers out in the light. This destroys many of the healing properties of herbs. The first remedy that we will prepare is mint and elder tea. This is a very old and very popular European recipe. When we gather the mint, we want to gather it in early summer before it flowers. When we gather mint, we want to cut the plant back to about four inches above the ground. Then we'll garble each stem, which means we'll remove the leaves and make sure that you discard any leaves that are discolored. Mint is diaphoretic, which means that it induces sweating. It is also carminative, which means it helps us to expel gas. Mint is used to break fevers, and it has been found to be antiseptic. Next, we're going to gather whorehound so that we can make a whorehound cough syrup. Whorehound is a perennial herb, and it's a member of the mint family. It likes sandy soil and lots of sun. When we gather whorehound, we want to cut the plant back to about four inches above the ground. Whorehound is a popular remedy for coughs and other types of respiratory illness. It aids the body in expelling mucus. You will also want to garble the whorehound, which means you will strip the leaves off the stem and discard any parts of the plant that are discolored. Now we'll gather French tarragon in order to make an herbal wine vinegar. French tarragon is preferred over Russian tarragon. Tarragon is aromatic, so it would lose some of its properties during drying. This is a good reason why it would be good to preserve it in vinegar. Tarragon is diuretic, and it stimulates the body and helps it to flush out toxins. Tarragon also stimulates the appetite. It helps with the digestion of foods, and it helps with indigestion. Tarragon will also help to expel worms. 
We're going to make a tincture with the barrage plant. Barrage has been called the herb of gladness. You want to gather the leaves in the early summer before the plant flowers. Barrage strengthens the adrenal glands, making it good for people who have been treated with cortisone or other steroids. Barrage is good for stress, and it can be used over an extended period of time. This is St. John's wort. And today, we're going to gather the flowers in order to make St. John's wort oil. St. John's wort flowers around the summer solstice, and you'll want to gather the flowers just as they come into full bloom, and you want to gather them in the morning as soon as the dew has dried. St. John's wort is anti-inflammatory, and it's good for the healing of the skin. It can be used for all types of wounds, bruises, burns, sunburns. It's also good for varicose veins and sciatica. We'll want to pick the flowers and fill a jar as full as we can with the flowers in order to make an oil. This is comfrey, and we'll be gathering the leaves in order to make a poultice. Comfrey is also called knit bone, and it contains a constituent called allantoin, which is a cell different, meaning that it speeds cell growth. The root of comfrey is the strongest in this ingredient, even though all parts of the plant contain it. Comfrey is used for wounds, bruises, burns, sprains, boils, and all other types of skin disorders. Comfrey helps prevent scar tissue, but when you have deep wounds, you have to make sure that it's not going to heal skin over an infection. A good way to prevent this is to use it with golden seal. There's some question as to some of the alkaloids contained in comfrey and its safety for internal use. These alkaloids are strongest in the root. They are also found in the new leaves and they are weakest in the mature leaves. When you're gathering your own herbs, you're going to want to make sure that you have absolutely positive identification. An experienced guide is probably your best bet, but there's also many good books available right now. You're going to want to make sure that you're collecting the right herb at the right time of day and at the right time of year. You want to make sure that you gather your herbs at the right time of day. And for most herbs, this means gathering them in the early morning hours as soon as the dew has dried. Rain washes away many of the aromatic oils and herbs, so if this is what you're after, you're going to want to wait to gather your herbs for several days after a rain. Please try to avoid any areas that have been contaminated by pesticides or any other types of contamination. You're going to want to avoid gathering along roadsides, power lines, along marshes or farm fields that have been sprayed. And also, dogs can pass parasites to people, so if your plants look yellowed, you'll want to avoid gathering from those areas. Always gather your plants with stewardship in mind. This means respectfully gathering your plants. Many cultures have rituals around the gathering and use of plants. Native Americans like to thank the plant and make an offering of either tobacco or cornmeal. What is important is that there's an exchange of energy. You'll want to increase plant populations, not decrease them. This means carefully thinning, replanting seeds and rootlets. Try not to take more than one third of the plants in any one area. And also, do not gather endangered species. You want to make sure that you gather your plants when the energy is most concentrated in the part of the plant that you want. This means that different plant parts will be gathered at different times of year. For gathering barks and twigs, most people gather them in the spring. This is when the rising sap enriches those parts of the plant. However, some people prefer to gather them in the fall. You're going to want to make sure that your shrub or tree is mature enough to withstand the harvesting. It's best if you can use a recently downed tree. In general, the bark from roots is the strongest then the bark from the trunk, and then the bark from branches. You'll want to gather leaves when they are the most lush, 
and before the plant has flowered. In general, you do not take all the leaves from a plant. However, you can when you're also gathering the roots. And also try to leave your leaves as whole as possible. Flowers are gathered when they're in bloom, but not yet fully expanded. Fruits and berries are gathered when they're fully ripe, but before decomposition starts to occur. Roots are gathered when the above ground growth has died. For most biennial plants, this means during the fall of the first year. And for most other plants, it means after two or three years of growth. You're going to want to process your herbal medicines as soon as possible after gathering your plants. Try to start out with simple remedies first. Use only your best ingredients. Your end product's only going to be as good as the ingredients that you use to pair it. Make sure that you have chosen the right herb and the right method of preparation. Your method of preparation should preserve as many of the healing qualities as possible. You're going to want to make sure that you prepare your herbal medicines carefully and lovingly. They may be ineffective or not work correctly if they're not prepared in the right way. You want your herbal medicines to be absorbed. And in general, herbs are best absorbed when they're in solution. We'll talk more about this in the kitchen. Mary Kay Cosmetics presents New Directions Glamour Adventure, a limited edition glamour collection for spring and summer, inspired by the season's best looks. Forget all about the provocative shapes, the dramatic hemlines, and the sometimes overstated looks of seasons past. They're not new. They're not now. Yesterday's frivolous fashions have been replaced by a sea of calm, a relaxed sophistication. One of the watchwords of the season? Natural. And nowhere is it more in evidence than in the American sportswear collections, where easy jackets and full trousers are front and center. And for day, the recurring theme is the Chanel-inspired suit, by all definitions of true classic, marked by a strong sense of simplicity and ladylike luxury. For evening, the look of the moment is decidedly exotic, especially in terms of color. Color which seems all the more pronounced when punctuated by a splash of sparkle. Fashion at its best, the looks range from soft and sensible all the way to sensuous. So now, more than ever, the most important point of view is yours. It's a move in the right direction for fashion and faces. This season, the glamour headline reads, Color. Foundation and cheek colors act as near-neutral backdrops for extraordinary eyes and luscious lips. Every way you play it, the effect is unmistakably modern undeniably appealing. And with Mary Kay's New Directions Glamour Collection, there are more options than ever, including 15 fabulous shadows in three distinctive collections. The Naturals, a selection of nature's best, chosen to bring the eyes into a softer, prettier focus. The Classics, a versatile assortment of contemporary colors with timeless appeal. And the Exotics, an eye-emphasizing collection that's anything but ordinary. Also new, two eyeshadow duos and a slate eye-defining pencil. There's also a far-reaching assortment of shades for your lips, cheeks, nails, and complexion. Radiant warms and classic cools, rich creams and shimmering frosts, luscious lights and brilliant brights. New Directions by Mary Kay. The news is the way you'll wear them.
To achieve the fresh face look of the moment, apply Mary Kay's new Tender Peach Gel Blush over your foundation for just a wash of color. Then carry through this soft and subtle theme to your eyes by shaping a perfect brow. Then apply a light shade of shadow to the brow bone, a touch of color on the inside lid, and a darker shade to the outside of the eye adds depth and dimension. Then use a wet shadow to line at the outer corner. To duplicate this look, apply natural cream to brow bone, natural peach to the inside lid, and natural brown in a wedge at the outer corner. Then, using a thin brush and a touch of water, line the outer corner with natural brown eyeshadow used wet as an eyeliner. And to finish the look, brown mascara, drops of honey lipstick, and peaches and cream color shield. But the soft and subtle options don't end here. Try combining classic white with classic pink and classic gray. Then line and define with slate eye-defining pencil. Or try exotic silver with exotic black, which will blend to an extra soft finish, defining the eye with charcoal pencil. The key to achieving this subtle glamour look is blending the shadows to a soft finish. It's clean, fresh glamour that lets your natural beauty show through. For a look that's sensible yet at the same time sophisticated, apply highlighter to the brow bone, a second shadow on the lid up to the inner brow, and a third shadow first along the lash line and then up to outer edge of the brow. Line above upper lashes and halfway under lower lashes. To duplicate this look, apply classic white to the brow bone, classic pink to the lid and classic burgundy to the lash line. Then, line and define with slate eye-defining pencil. And finish with black mascara. Complete the look with soft pink gel, pink orchid lipstick, and petal pink color shield. This sensible yet sophisticated eye look can also be achieved with numerous other shadow combinations. Try combining natural cream, natural peach, and natural orange with brown eyeliner. Or exotic silver, exotic magenta, and exotic purple with charcoal eye-defining pencil. It's the perfect balance of eye and lip color for an effect that's polished, professional, and unmistakably up-to-date. To let your eyes do the talking, try going a little bolder. Apply a vibrant shade to the brow bone, a second and equally colorful shadow to the lid, and a third shadow in a wedge at the outer corner and then in along the crease. Line above and below lashes with a wet eye shadow. To duplicate the look, use exotic purple on the brow bone, exotic magenta on the lid, and exotic blue for the wedge and in along the crease. Then, line and define with exotic black eyeshadow applied wet and finish with two coats of black mascara. The finishing touches are wild plum gel blush with violet blusher for long-lasting color and cranberry glaze lipstick. And on her nails, wild raspberry color shield topped with satin finish protector for a fabulous frosted finish. But with nothing more than a change of color, this glamour look takes an about face. The first variation. For a smooth finish. The overall effect, brighter, bolder, and always very becoming. A colorful contemporary look that adds glamour to any occasion. The inspiration for this kaleidoscope of options? The season's latest fashions, and nothing was lost in the translation. The key direction? A look of luxury, very wearable luxury. The most notable changes are the clean-cut shapes, the slightly longer lengths, and the soft, soft fabrics, 
all changes well suited to color. Shades this season range from soft and subdued, white, cream, beige, and powdery pastels, to bold new brights like orange, purple, pink, and emerald green. And get back black. Navy is the new neutral, and it's being used most often in what has become a major theme this season, nautical wear. Now navy and white goes everywhere, from daytime casual to after five glamour. The business signals to watch for, Chanel-inspired suits, closer-fitting jackets, gold buttons, chains, and pearls. In sportswear, pants take center stage paired with wraparound jackets and tops. Other trends that just won't quit. Exquisitely detailed white blouses, florals, jumpsuits, gold buttons. of silk chiffon, organza, and mousseline. And when all out glitz and glitter is the order of the evening, shine on in iridescent beading, jewels, and lace. The most important trend of all? The re
said, in a neurosis, the parts of the personality are all alienated. If we identify with these alienated parts, we can now get ready to assimilate these disowned parts and grow again, become more whole. Now, I would like to integrate more the idea of the dream work and the total identification work. So, who, who wants to work on a dream? This time, I want you, as much as possible, always return to your experience. Right now, what do you feel right now? Um. You feel M. Keep your eyes and ears open. Every clue has to be accepted. I feel like taking my shoes off. <laughs> I feel the need to be clear when I tell my dream. say I experienced when I was very young maybe about eight years old and I've been experienced it even lately uh, I'm standing on the shore the shore is sort of sandy and soft there's wood around me and in front there's a lake that is very round but I don't see the other end of the lake where I'm standing right now but the lake I know is very round or I find it out later but I feel it's very round very circular not an uh, edgy shore it's a very soft lake, and the light is very beautiful. It, it is, it's not sun, but it's very bright in the sky. Yeah. Let me already work on the dream a bit. Be the lake. And lake, tell me your, your story. Uh, a lake, when you want to tell me your story. Be a lake and tell me your story. Um... I'm a, I'm a round, round lake. Uh, I, I sort of feel perfect, perfect lake. I, my water is very good and soft to the touch. Uh, to whom are you talking? To myself. Now, you know the third law in Gestalt therapy. Do unto others what you're doing unto yourself. So talk to us. Um, you're the lake. I'm the lake. <laughs> you you would like to come in in me in my lake in this lake because it, it's it's very beautiful and the water feels the very good. The second long you start up. You don't say it, say I or you. Ah. Uh. <laughs> you notice I'm beginning to become very officious. The <laughs> <laughs> you you would like to come into me. You can swim into me very easily. And there's no, nothing mucky in my bottom. My bottom is of pure sand. And I know if, when you come in the middle of my lake, there's a surprise. There's something that you don't know. And it might frighten you, or, or you might like it very much, but there's something right in the middle of, of, of me on the lake that, that is very strange. And you have to swim or row to get to it. You, you don't see it from the shore, so it, it's really worth Swimming to go and see it. See it? <laughs> see me. <laughs> see this again to the group. It, it's worth swimming in me or taking a, a boat. Who's Not a power boat. Well. Uh, it, it's worth to you. Who is it? It is well. The, it is worth... Don't say it. Try I. I am well. I am worth you swimming or taking a boat to come and see what's in the middle of the lake because it, it's a surprise. It is a surprise. Uh, I am a surprise that might, you might not solve the surprise though. It's a, it, it's a, in the, I have in the middle of my lake, I have a statue, or it's a little boy, and he's pouring water 
but many people, I, <laughs> when I go in that lake and I come to drink the water, I, I wake up. So maybe when, when wait, you... Wait, wait, stop here. Close your eyes. Go on dreaming. Now the waking up is a beautiful gimmick to interrupt the solution of a dream. You came back to us. Did you go on dreaming? The same dream? I, I, it took a long time before I, I, I came to the dream. I saw the light, light in my eyes. And a feeling of, of very busy. Ex Exaggerate this. Go on. Very busy. <laughs> Dance it. Now let's have the story of the figure of the statue. You are now the statue. I'm a statue in the middle of the lake. To whom are you talking? Huh? To whom are you talking? Uh, I was trying to talk to Helen. <laughs> uh, I, I'm gray. And I'm sort of a, a, I'm pretty classical looking. I, I uh, I'm looking like most l little statue of little boys you would see would look like. And I hold a, an amphora, or is it is a vase that, that has a, a small neck and big in the bottom. And I hold it, and though I'm immobile, I pour it. And the water is, I pour this water in the lake, I don't know where it comes from, but this water is extremely pure, and, and you, you would really benefit from drinking this water. You would feel all good all over because you had water on the outside of your body. From the lake, I am sitting in the middle, and, 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 and the, the water is really good outside your body. But then, you, I really want you to drink the water I'm giving from my uh, vessel because it, it will really make you feel good inside also. But I don't know why, because sometimes you cannot drink it. You just come to drink it. You're all happy. You're swimming. You want to drink it, and then you can't drink it. But I can just, I cannot bend to you. I just c can keep on pouring my water, and then I'm hoping that you come and drink it. So this is good to you, the last sentence. I, I cannot come down and, and, and give the water to you. I just can keep on pouring it and hoping that you'll come and drink it. I just can keep on pouring it. Okay. Now, play the, play the water. Tell us. You know the water. In, in the vessel? Yeah, the water in the vessel. What's your script? What's your story, water? I don't know much about myself. Say this again. I don't know much about myself. And again. I don't know much about myself. I don't know much. I come. I don't know how I come. But I know I'm good. That's all I know. <laughs> I would like you to drink me because I know I'm good. I, I don't know where I come from. I'm in that big bay. It's black bay. It's now get up, say this to each one of us. Stand up. Go to each one of us and tell us this. Here's the water. I, I'm water in, in a vein. And I don't know where I come from. But I know I'm good to drink. I'm water in a vein. Well, use your own words now.
I look like water and they, they call me water when I'm just there in the vase. <laughs> and, and there's no all in the vase. I don't know where I'm, nobody, I'm just there all the time and I'm just pouring out. <laughs> and I'd like you to drink me. <laughs> Go on to the next. I, I'm there. I'm, I'm white and pure. And if you ask me where I come from, I cannot tell you, but it's a, it's a miracle. I always do. It always comes out, keeps on, keeps on, just for you to drink me. I cannot tell you. You have to get out of the other water and come. <laughs> I'm in a vein, and I don't know where I come from. <laughs> but I'm coming out all the time, and you have to drink me a little bit of it. <laughs> now, what are you doing with yourself? I'm holding myself. <laughs> Do this to me. What do you experience now? I feel I've discovered something. Yeah, what? I, I, I used to think, I, I thought of the dreams, I used to think the water in the vase was, was spirituality. Beauty of of, of birth and, and and death is 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 so it's such a mystery for me the beauty of life and I thought that that in the vase was the secret and and I wasn't high enough to 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 drink the water that's why I woke up <laughs> when I was very small I, it, it didn't bother me I was just happy of swimming I didn't care about drinking the water waking up but. As I grew older, I got more and more <laughs> resentful not to be able to drink the water. All right, this again, as far as I want to go. Again, you see the same, what we did before with the dreams. No interpretation. You know everything, you know much more than I do. And all my interpretation only would mislead you. It's again, simply the question of learning, for, of uncovering your true self. Thank you.
Good morning. What you've just seen is static, followed by what our engineers call color bars and tone. What you're about to see is something we call 19, WOIO. Our full name is WOIO Shaker Heights Cleveland. WOIO is owned and operated by Channel 19 Incorporated and broadcasts by authority and always by authority of the Federal Communications Commission. Our stereo transmitter delivers an impressive 3.758 megawatts of effective radiated power and we do our best to use that power to serve the public interest and bring you a full day of entertainment and information. We welcome your comments and suggestions. Send them to this address. 19 WOIO 2720 Van Aken Boulevard, Cleveland, Ohio. 44120. We'll begin our program schedule in just a moment, but first, our national anthem, in stereo. <laughs> 